Hey guys, it's Cho and I'm back with another video. Today, I have a very special guest. Her name is Cece, but she's known as Hoarder Beauty on Instagram. And we're gonna have a conversation about um, a controversy that recently happened that led to me discovering her. Um, so without further ado, here's our special guest, Cece. Just take a moment to introduce yourself to my audience. Hey everyone, I'm Cece. Uh, also known as Hoarder Beauty. So tell us a little bit about like what you do on social media. Like you're an influencer, but kind of give us like a quick rundown. What type of content do you create? How did you get into starting content creation? Kind of give us a rundown. Okay, so I think I joined Instagram or in the as Hoarder Beauty back in 2019. And uh -huh. at that point, I wasn't, no, I didn't set out to be an influencer or anything like that. I just mm -hmm. love kind of beauty and it was more of a way for me to connect with other people with similar interests. And yeah. well, you can probably tell by uh, my handle, Hoarder Beauty, I, <laughs> I love hoarding beauty products. Uh -huh. So um, I was trying to use Instagram as a way to kind of document what I have so I don't forget in a way what I mm -hmm. bought it and I think as the you know as 2020 happened we probably all had a little bit more free time on our hands so we did. I started we getting did. more kind of into the uh, content creation space because I used to kind of upload maybe only like once or twice a month mm -hmm. then you know since the Penang started, I started doing it more regularly. And then I started getting kind of more followers. And then I started getting um, contacted by brands. So that's when I thought, oh, okay, this might be something interesting to do. So I just right. started getting into that space. Yeah, so that's I awesome. Kind of, I kind of just fell into it. I wouldn't really call myself like, you know, an influencer. Right, right. Much now, but yeah, I... Yeah, but I've been here like for a long time since like. Yeah, that's kind of cool. It's it's funny how sometimes you can like just fall into things like it happens so organically. It sounds like you were just trying to like organize your life and be, you know, you're a hoarder of beauty products. And so let me make sure that I document things and kind of like keep track of things so you're not using expired products. I mean, who hasn't used, I've used expired makeup before. <laughs> oh so yeah, like, me all the time. <laughs> guilty, <laughs> guilty. <laughs> um, so before we get into what exactly happened to you, um, you know, not not only influencers watch my channel. I know the influencers are watching, even, even if you don't want to admit it, I know you're watching, but a lot of people may not know what Octoly is. Do you mm -hmm. want to kind of explain to the audience what Octoly is? How'd you get started with it? and like how the process works. Sure, so Octoly is like, a, I guess a influencer platform. So what happens is um, they have contacts with brands and um, mm. influencers like myself. We apply for their program to connect with brands mm -hmm. and um, brands will send us products in exchange for a post or a review on certain websites. Awesome. And how long have you been with Octoly? So it's funny you asked because I looked up my email and I joined on the 16th of July, 2020. So, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, almost, almost two years. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's kind of a long time. Okay. Um, so can you describe um, the process? So when I say the process, so when you receive a product via Octoly, do you have to then submit that review onto Octoly's website or do you just post it on your own social media? Okay, let me um, go in, into Octoly a little bit more. So the way Octoly works is um, they have kind of two levels mm -hmm. of users. So they have what you call the consumer. So um, anyone can actually create an account on there and then oh. you'll get a credit to use because they it's kind of like a marketplace in a way so they mm -hmm. have like uh, a range of products so you can go and select the ones that you want with the credits that you have so that's kind of like the consumer space that anyone can join and then they have this um, influencer or creator 
um, account. And that for that, you're required to have a social platform. So it can be Instagram, TikTok, even YouTube. So you can apply show. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to kind of meet a minimum requirement before they accept you right. as an influencer. And like, I don't know, they have, they have kind of some criteria, mm -hmm. I guess, based on looks or whatever on your platform because right when i first tried to join as an influencer they rejected me and i've heard that's the story from quite a lot of people that actually oct rejected them but they don't really give you a reason why interesting interesting so, yeah i assume they probably use like some data driven information to kind of like analyze your profile. So maybe like if you're not pulling enough engagement or views, maybe that impacts it. But there's yeah, also like really a human hard component. To tell because yeah. I've also heard from some of my influencer friends that they change pretty much nothing. And then a couple of months later, they got accepted. And that's pretty much what happened to me. Mm. I was rejected and then. I didn't really do anything and then I got accepted. So I was like, okay, let's not question that. So as an influencer, um, you get a couple more credits than a consumer and right. you can use those to apply for campaigns. So oh. they have different types of campaigns. So they mm -hmm. have like, you know, ones based on IG where you have to create a post Mm -hmm. or they have text only um, reviews. So a lot of times those are reviews on like, websites like sephora or alter or the brand's own website right yeah so once you've written the review you usually like need to for text review you need to like do a screenshot and then basically put that onto their platform and then that will kind of say you've completed the process and then you get a credit back gotcha and, for, and then for things like tiktok and instagram you after you've uploaded your content, you just basically paste that link into mm -hmm. their website. So that's how, yeah, it works basically. Interesting. You know, it's so funny because I've been creating content for a while now and I had never heard of Octoly until this situation. It's kind oh, of crazy. Really? So as a, I think they're not really like a beauty specific okay. kind of um, program, but I would say 99% of their product is like beauty based. And the way that I heard about it is basically from other influencer posting gotcha. content for Octoly because you do have to disclose that you were given this product from Octoly right. in the brand. As you should, because it's against the law to not do so. But yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. That's cool. So you've been with Octoly now for almost two years, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. um would you say you've gotten a lot of value from your partnership with Octoly? I would say for me personally, yes, because okay. I'm a small content creator. Mm -hmm. So I don't have brands, you know, coming at me saying, right. we're going to give you all these products. Right. And for me, it was really an easy way to connect with brands. Like the thing that I do like about Octoly is the relationship they have with the brand is they have a lot of quite famous or big brands yeah. that I guess if I had to go and contact them individually, that it right. would take up kind of a lot of my time and it will be kind of difficult to maintain all of this relationship. So for right. me, the advantage of using Octoly is to be able to connect to these big brands and mm -hmm. also because I'm a bit of a hoarder. I like to try kind of everything. I don't mm -hmm. really want to kind of devote myself to kind of only a few brands. So Octoly right. kind of exposes me to all of these brands. Mm -hmm. So I think if I had kind of more of a following or I kind of, I don't do this full time, obviously. So yeah. if I was kind of doing this more seriously, then I probably won't need Octoly as much. But for someone like me, who's kind of, doing it kind of for fun yeah kind of part-time for fun it, it, it's yeah. like very useful that's awesome yeah and you know you bring up a good point because there's a certain business aspect of it all and I think that 
this is also a great thing for the brands too, because they don't have to devote the manpower and the time and resources to building these relationships with a bunch of different influencers. They can just, you know, give it to this third party named Octoly and they can save money and, you know, you know, amplify their marketing because most brands are putting a lot of time and energy into influencer marketing already. So to even cut those costs even more by using Octoly seems like a win-win for everybody involved, right? Exactly. So, I mean, I don't know how the brand side of Octoly works. I mm -hmm. presume they would charge kind of a certain amount to right. connect these brands with the users. But mm -hmm. for us, I mean, most of the campaigns are not paid. It's just a product exchange. Mm -hmm. Right. But yeah, I actually, I've kept a spreadsheet of every single item I've received from brands. So oh, wow. from Oxley, I can tell you, I received 221 items and the total cost is $10,311. Okay, so CC's winning, we're winning. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, this all sounds fantastic and all except hell was unleashed on earth recently. Do you want to kind of go through step by step what exactly happened? Um, those that are watching right now, they may have already saw the big scandal that occurred on social media, but for those that are watching that did not hear, kind of tell us what happened and how things fell apart with Octoly. Okay, so I apply for a product on Octoly mm -hmm. to review. So this was um, for a text review, so not something I have to post on Instagram. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was uh, with a brand called Ladykind. Actually, I never heard of them before um, yeah. this with Octoly. And um, they sent me a set. So Ladykind, I think they're um, into the CBD space. So they sent mm. me a set of um, three sample products to review. So when I received the product, I saw there were kind of some problems with, with it. So mm -hmm. I described it kind of in details on my Instagram, but right. like I got two little kind of tinctures and um, there were like this settlement on the product. And when I shook it, like it didn't move. So I wasn't really <laughs> sure, you know, whether I'm supposed to, because or tinctures you're supposed to ingest it so I didn't really right. want to kind of take the chance unless you know this is okay and I also received a cream and the cream was kind of crusted on the top and it didn't look filled at all it looked like it was kind of melted so I took some pictures and I sent them to the brand over okay. Instagram mm -hmm. and it was, I think it was on a Friday or Saturday. So kind of the weekend when I when mm -hmm. I sent it. So I didn't receive a reply straight away. So while I was waiting for the reply from the brand, I kind of, I do on my Instagram kind of like a weekly roundup of what I've received yeah. during the week. So as part of that weekly roundup, I posted what Ladykind sent me and I wrote on my Instagram story, um, um, there's a slight mishap to the package, but I'm waiting for the brand to get back to me. Mm -hmm. So then on the Monday, I guess when the brand has come back in, they were really offended by this story I posted about them where I said there was a slight mishap to the packaging. So they sent me a DM saying, like, we really appreciate, no, like, we don't want you to kind of post this negative comment on Instagram can you please take it down even if there was a problem we can kind of discuss it yeah and I'll, I'll post the receipts because I read what they said to you and that was out of pocket that was crazy what they said to you it was uncalled for so I think it was kind of what they sent me that kind of got me a little bit worked up yeah I could I, yeah I would be worked up too <laughs> so I mean I, I was discussing this, everything with them kind of privately or all of the right. problems. I, I never posted the actual problems on my mm -hmm. story. I just posted this mishap. So once they were trying to kind of silence me, I usually go the other way. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So once they said, you know, 
take down your story. I'm like, well, I'm not going to take down my story. And plus, I don't think I really said anything at all. <laughs> but like, yeah. I said, like, mishap to the, to the packaging. Like, what's so offensive about yeah, that? I don't feel like your, your, your comments were like tearing them down. If anything, it was giving them an opportunity to say, oh, I mean, this is a slight mishap. This could be easily corrected. Like, you didn't seem to be overly negative, which is why yeah, it's so strange I mean, to me that they were negative. When I posted that, it was usually I just give a little commentary to my viewers yeah. when I post my story. And because I hadn't tried a product at that stage, I mm -hmm. just wanted to say, well, there was a slight mishap. That's why I don't have any comment. So right. it wasn't really meant to be reflecting on the brand or anything like that. But once I guess I got that message from the brand, I decided to post basically everything I said to the brand Absolutely. publicly on my story. Scorched actually, earth. You at went that scorched stage, earth. <laughs> I, I had actually blocked Lady Kind from viewing my story. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they weren't actually supposed to see all the subsequent things that I posted on my story, which mm -hmm. was really just my exchange with them and what the problems were with the right. product. Mm -hmm. and I got kind of quite a lot of feedback on my on my story I guess yeah mm -hmm. and um I think a couple of hours later I noticed that um the lady kind they're, they're kind of a quite a small company so gotcha okay i looked them up of course after after all of these things happened and i saw that their social media manager was viewing my story using their mm. personal account oh wow oh, so wow. i knew they were kind of like really i guess they were pretty worked up about this thing of course yeah so then <sighs> i decided to kind of unblock lady kind and mm -hmm. to kind of tell them well this is not the way you deal with feedback. Of, I mean, yeah, feedback. So, I mean, they could have easily just corrected this, the situation. Like easily. they told me basically when I sent the photos to them that everything that I received was fine and it was the way it was meant to be. Well, that's strange. Okay. Then just so, take the honest review and move on then. If, if okay. That's, that's I mean, weird. if that's the product I receive, I'm going to write a review based on how, you know, I received them. So I wrote my review. Mm -hmm. I gave them one star and I posted it on their website and I screenshotted everything. And then I posted a review on Octoly. Um, as I was required, I did take some screenshots required, this yeah. time. Actually, usually I don't take screenshots of everything I post on yeah. Octoly. Yeah. But I did this time. Yeah. Smart girl, smart girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought kind of that was the end of it. Mm -hmm. And the next day I woke up. Actually, I, I had this really bad habit when I was using Octoly. The first thing I would do when I wake up was check the Octoly website. Okay. So uh -huh. for new products that, that get released. Because you're a horror so, of beauty, of course. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's, there's this thing with Octoly. If you've used it for a long time, it's actually, the products go really quickly. It's oh, almost okay. like a game. So if you want to apply mm. for something, it's like, some of them go in like a minute. So as soon as the product gets released, you have to apply for it. So that was kind of, you know, it was a, it was a little bit of fun for me. It was yeah. like the excitement of getting the product. And that but might be intentional on their part too, by the way. I think so. Yeah, yeah I mean, of course. It causes a lot of grief with people. It's like, why can't I get all these products? Mm -hmm. So right. it, it was a, a bit of fun and game. So the mm -hmm. first thing I do every morning is usually kind of log on to Octoly and see what's mm -hmm. new. So at around 6 30 a.m i was able to log into my website then you know i got my kids ready for school and mm -hmm. then i logged in i tried to log in again at eight o'clock and that's when i got the message well i couldn't load up the app at all and then i tried on the website 
And basically, that's when I got the message of saying my Octalia account was deleted. So, I mean, <laughs> I didn't get, I mean, Octalia is terrible at communication. So that, that's right. one thing. Like when I was using the account, if I had any sort of problems, they never replied to emails and never replied to DMs. Yeah. So if you go to the Octoly Instagram, you'll see messages from people basically all over saying, please reply to my DM, right. please reply right. to my email. They basically mm -hmm. never reply to anything. Gotcha. So I wasn't kind of, in a way, I was not expecting them to really right. say anything to me. Yeah. But the day before I hadn't really done anything, I wrote that one review for mm -hmm. Lady Time on the website and I didn't write any other review. I might have applied for a product. So that was the only thing I right. did. So, I mean, I can't say it was because, no, I can't say 100% it was because I wrote this one star review for Lady Khan. That's why my account was deleted. It could be for some other reason, but I would just find it to be very coincidental if it was for some other reason. Very coincidental. That is such BS. That is such BS. And it's, that's that's terrible because Octoly prides, I did a little bit of research on them prior to this video, and they pride themselves on being like, they want people to do honest reviews and be thorough and detailed and share your experiences. And you only shared your experiences. So it's it's weird to me that they would take the side of Lady Kind allegedly and allegedly delete your, your entire account with them um it's it's unfortunate um today's video is sponsored by me yes me if you didn't know by now i have a platform called buy me a coffee where i post exclusive content that you can only find over there what type of content can you expect to find on buy me a coffee let's take a look I cover a lot of different aspects of life, such as financial independence, spirituality, political rants, and fitness. I film vlogs where I'm raw, honest, and vulnerable about the more personal aspects of my life in the hopes that my journey can inspire someone else on theirs. Now, if you're a fan of my investigative, opinion-based skincare reporting on YouTube, you'll love to see some behind-the-scenes tea, as well as receipts that I save for only my closest supporters. This content is semi-private, so I do ask that you don't share any of it publicly. I know that if people are willing to pay money to see this, that I can feel safe in expressing myself authentically and safely. Additionally, I offer a few unique um, services on my Buy Me A Coffee page, such as tarot card readings. Yes, no one saw that coming, but I am really into tarot cards. And I also do skincare um, consultations and um, advice packages. So if you're into supporting me as a creator and you can do so financially, buy me a coffee is actually going to be the most efficient way to do so. I just wanna thank everyone that has already supported me on buy me a coffee. Um, it is so special to me that you believe in my brand, believe in my reporting and believe in me as a content creator. So thank you so much for the, those that are early adopters of my content. Um, and I also want to thank those that are going to be future supporters. Again, if you're interested in supporting me, go to buymeacoffee.com slash that show. Now let's get back to the video. Um, now with, at this point in time, um, how were you feeling emotionally about your account being deleted? Like, how did you feel at this point? Disbelief and... I like I just couldn't believe that something like that could happen. Mm -hmm. I think when I took issues with Lady Kind, I didn't think I would get kind of that sort of backlash because mm -hmm. for me, not having my Octolio account is actually a big loss because right. actually I think at that point, at around half of my PR was coming from Octoly. Mm -hmm. So yeah. all of a sudden, basically half of the source of my income in a way, because I really I mean, only yeah. get paid by product was yeah. cut off. And 
I didn't think I did anything to, to deserve that. So, and, you know, like straight after it happened, I was feeling kind of really dejected. Like mm -hmm. I yeah. wanted to quit the space. I, I mm -hmm. posted on my story at that point. I saw, that, I saw that. I was so, that made me so sad to see that. Yeah. That made me so uh, sad to see that because someone like you, who you do this in your spare time, you don't do this with the, the idea that you're going to become this multimillionaire influencer. You know, one day, one day. Maybe one day. We're hoping we're crossing our fingers. I'll, I'll like, comment, and save your posts. Don't worry. But, um, you know, you seem like a very passionate person. You do this because you're genuine. And to be kind of betrayed by a company that you saw shared those same core values, I would feel dejected too. Mm. Um, so then what happened? What happened at the point where you started to see social media, other people commenting on your situation? Take me through that process. So after I posted kind of on my story, I got a few replies saying, mm -hmm. you know, don't quit the space. We're here to support you. And so I kind of, I was feeling really angry at that point. So yeah. I wanted to share my mm -hmm. story. So mm -hmm. I, I wrote my post and I shared it with a couple of people and I wanted them to pass it around. Mm -hmm. And the post did a lot better than I thought. Mm -hmm. And I got a lot of um, encouragement from people messaging me saying, basically don't quit the space right like we really value honest review we need people who want to give their honest opinion yes, we do yes we do yes we do I mean I've been doing reviews for like a long time and mm -hmm. I've always always written mm -hmm. my honest opinion it doesn't matter whether I bought something myself I got given something I mean, I don't really get kind of paid. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I can't really comment on that. But if I was able to, I would definitely give my opinion on all sorts of posts. I don't think it makes a difference to me whether I bought something or mm -hmm. not. Right, right. Yeah, that's so I'm, I'm really happy that you received that support because you know, it would be a shame to lose again. So I don't know if you've watched a lot of my videos, but I kind of, I talk about a lot of issues within the skincare space. And I watched that video. Yes. <laughs> and, and unfortunately, there are some influencers out there that are not as honest as you and they are intentionally um, manipulative and not sharing their honest opinion, even when they're being paid by brands thousands of dollars to promote their companies. And it's just like, are you a paid actor or are you an actual influencer and content creator? There's a difference, you know? Yeah. And I hate to see people like you who have a smaller following to feel dejected and not want to continue doing content because we need more content creators like you instead of the fake influencers who are dishonest just my opinion it's just my little rant but I, I want to uplift people like you kind of in the influencer space now yeah. a lot of brands want to dictate exactly mm -hmm. what they want you to say I've seen some kind of um requirements on Octoly yeah. reviews where the brand would actually give you a script and you're supposed to read off the script <laughs> as well. yeah I mean like, wouldn't people get suspicious, though, if you all of a sudden you see, like, hundreds of posts where people say exactly the same thing? The same thing, yeah. But, yeah, it's it's really kind of, like, me as an influencer, I definitely would only want to kind of watch people who are genuine. Right, yeah. And And brands as well. So if I go to a brand site and I see all these videos where people are saying the exact same thing mm -hmm. and you know I would be very suspicious and the other thing is with, review, with uh, reviews if I go to a, a site and all I see are five-star glowing reviews 
then I would also be a little bit suspicious. Same, same, for sure. That's so interesting. And I don't know, we need more people like you. I, that's all I know is we need more honesty um, from our influencers. And I'm so happy that I found you throughout this controversy. Um, so after your post blew up, because your post really, really blew up and it was all <laughs> over the place for a while. How, like, what did you see happen to your channel? I mean, to your, your Instagram, did you get more followers, a lot more engagement? Have you gotten a lot more support continued after the drama died down? Kind of talk us through so, that. I saw definitely a big spike when mm -hmm. I did the post. So I think yeah. over that two days, I got about 300 new followers. Wow. Which actually for me is a lot because I don't gain a lot of followers. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. I know some people actually gain that much a day, but like never me. Yeah. So I did see a huge <laughs> spike. Uh -huh. when the post happened and um but after that actually it kind of went back to normal and actually a lot of people who follow me and followed me so interesting <laughs> okay <laughs> interesting go. but and also one thing I was kind of you know a little bit sad about is some of my long-term followers after I posted this they actually unfollowed me Oh, really? Th that's yeah, shocking Yeah, I to mean, me. they were kind of in the minority, but mm -hmm. it was like, you know, two or three. So that kind of, I think that kind of affected me a little more than... Really? Yeah. Why do you... Okay, so that's interesting. And of course, you would notice because you know who your viewers are. You know who your long-term viewers yeah. are. Why do you think that they unfollowed you? I think they kind of don't like conflict probably mm -hmm. because like I anytime I kind of have some sort of beef with mm -hmm. any sort of brand I do post it yeah so mm -hmm. like brands taking advantage of influencer kind of things like that I would post it on my story yeah so, well you know what I think there is something to be said about some consumers they want to stick their head in the sand they want to stick their their head in a hole in the sand and they they want to block out the negativity some people only want the good news they don't want the negative news and we can have a further discussion about why that's good or bad but i think that is a fact that there are some people out there that just they don't want the drama they don't want the conflict they just want yeah. someone to tell them that like this potion is going to make them look 10 years younger <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know yeah so I guess my my advice to you would be to not not internalize that. You know, mm. it's not you, it's them. You know, that's what I would say. Um, I mean, I, I kind of look at this whole situation as there's not really anything I can do. So mm -hmm. if they want to unfollow me, that's their choice. So I'm going right. to keep being who I am. And I mean, the long term, if they don't like what I'm doing, then it's probably better that they unfollow me anyway. I agree with that. I think that. it's more yeah. kind of at that point, I I keep thinking, what did I do to deserve like getting my Octoly account deleted and having these people kind of unfollow me? But right, right. I kind of, you know, it's been uh, just over a month now since this happened. So I'm kind of more accepting. Yeah. Yeah. And you haven't heard uh, anything from Octoly whatsoever? No, nothing. So the day that my account was deleted, I sent them a message. I mean, I didn't write all these things about Lady Kind and everything. I just simply right, yeah. asked. I tried to log into my account, but it said it was deleted. Can you tell me why? And can you kind of help me log back in? Mm -hmm. So right, I right. received nothing as, as I expected, actually. Right, right. I sent them a follow up, I think, in the next week. And I also made a comment on the Instagram, but that was it. They never replied. But kind of from past dealing with Octoly, they never replied anyway. Like before shame when I had on a, them. Shame on them. Really, honestly. Like, shame really, on Octoly. One thing about Octoly is the way that they treat the influencer is really, really poor. Yet yeah. I think because they don't really have a direct competitor in that space, mm -hmm. people would be bad mouthing Octoly, but then yeah they still go back to octoly because there's there no is, competition there's no yeah, competition there is no competition so mm. and 
I mean, Octoly probably sees all the influencers as replaceable because, you know, oh, they yeah. reject probably thousands of people a day, you know. Mm -hmm. yep. What's yep. one person like me? They can just get another 10 replacements. So they don't really Terrible. need to, I guess, treat the influencer in, they don't. in any sort of... Yeah. And, and they're getting paid by these brands. So their incentive is to protect the brands. At the end of the day, if it's if it's CC versus Lady Kind, they're gonna go with Lady Kind because Lady Kind is paying them a check. Exactly. Um, I think someone needs to come up with the Octoly competitor. Who's in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's unfortunate. So um, one of my last questions is, what are some of your biggest takeaways from this situation? either personally, professionally, what are some of your biggest takeaways? So I, I guess the thing for me is I did, the best thing that came out of it for me mm -hmm. was I found out basically that people do value honest mm -hmm. opinion. Yeah. I mean, I always gave it, but I, but I also saw, I guess, other influencers mm -hmm. rating five stars for mm -hmm. everything. And, you know, sometimes I think, well, they're doing better than me. They're getting more brand deals than me. Right, right. right? So should I just go off and do the same thing? Just mm -hmm. gush about everything that I receive and then just receive love from brands and, you know, mm -hmm. maybe deals out of it. But then I also heard from people who basically value honest opinion and then kind of push me along to say you know this is the right path because in the long term if you basically always push every single product people mm -hmm. are not going to believe what you say absolutely absolutely yeah. and the other thing is probably that I connected with quite a few new people that I wouldn't have met mm -hmm. if it wasn't for for this process like you for example <laughs> oh I, I love that I love that it's so funny yeah. how the universe works the universe connects people who need to be connected yeah and like another thing good that came out of it was I reduced the amount of PL that I was receiving and actually this was something I've been wanting to do for a while believe it or not because I just feel like I was receiving too many things mm -hmm. even though I was trying them all there was no way I could use up everything right, it was kind right. of like a waste in a way I tried to give it away but there's, there's <laughs> only so, much. so many people I can push it off to right is and, the hoarder not becoming a hoarder anymore <laughs> what's going on yes you know mm. trying trying to improve my ways okay so, okay so it kind of maybe it's like a blessing in disguise because yeah. I always wanted to kind of say no to right. these new new shiny new products but mm -hmm. it's just very very difficult for me to of course do it. of course <laughs> so it's kind of forced me in a way to kind of have less use less right right and it kind of I've also been thinking about my relationship with brands in general how right. they treat me whether mm -hmm. I want a relationship with them and mm -hmm. how much my time is actually worth and you know whether I should just get these products and I have to create all these content and satisfy basically all these conditions for the brands right yeah wow that's I think that's a beautiful ending I really do think that I'm so happy that <laughs> you know, through this kind of traumatic situation, you've been able to find the silver lining and take something valuable from it. And that's what I think people should do with anything in terms of a situation they're dealing with in life is really be a little bit more optimistic and kind of like pick out the things that are positive that you can take with you into the next chapter of your life. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, one thing I still wish is yeah. that Lady Kind and Octoly get some sort of retribution for all of this, but I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> you know, I agree. I agree. Um, and that's why, that's another reason why I wanted to have you on, because I want to take, I want to tell everyone publicly that Lady Kind is trash, Octoly is trash. <laughs> so like, you mean, you know, if, you know, you spread the word, people know, and I'm rooting for any company that wants to compete with Octoly. 
Mm, me too. <laughs> um, so, I mean, that's going to be it for the main interview questions. Um, but I want to ask you a really, um, a really tough question for you, probably. Um, we're going to end on a really funny note. Um, okay. Can you name one or two of your favorite brands of skincare? You know, this is going to be difficult for me. I right? know. I am a I hoarder. Know. I know. <laughs> So what do, I, what are you currently into? Let's, that maybe that's easier. What are you currently into these days? I actually want to say something a little bit related to that. So mm -hmm. I have a couple of brands that I love working with as oh. an influencer, content creator, because they treat the creators right. Tell us that. I love that. Okay. Okay. So my favorite out of the lot is Coco Kind. Oh, okay. Awesome. Have you heard of them? I've heard of them. I have heard of them yeah. actually. So they have been fantastic to work with. And okay. I'm going to give you an example of what happened. So um, a couple of months ago, they released a new SPF product. So mm -hmm. I was sent that as part of the launch. Um, it didn't meet my expectation. Okay. And when I applied it, it actually peeled. Oh, wow. So, oh, that's sad. Okay. Yeah. I when I posted my content, mm -hmm. I wrote exactly what happened and they were very supportive. They said, you know, this happened with some people. And actually I applaud them because they wrote on their own Instagram post mm -hmm. about this exact problem. They said some wow. people found that our SPF does pill and they were so transparent with wow with that so i mean not every single product from a company can be five out of five and that's that's right. just the fact right it's just the fact I mean, yeah exactly so even though i didn't like that particular product from right. coco kind there's still other products that i love that i want to promote so in terms of just product itself, Coco Kind is probably not my favorite brand, but right. I want to support them because of the transparency and the way that they treat influencer. They never push you to post anything. Interesting. So, I want to buy from Coco Kind now. Now I want to go yeah, look up. Exactly. I'm going to go look up Coco Kind and see what I want to try out now. That's so cool. Yeah. So they're they're my favorite in terms of kind of working with brands yeah um i would say brands that i like at the moment um i recently got into olaplex which is hair care brand Ooh, so not, not care. exactly skin care but yeah okay. that's made a big difference in my hair really okay so they're not just all hype it's not just all hype it's actually working okay. for you so i mean they have a lot of products mm -hmm. i tried almost all of it okay so <laughs> not every product is okay. good of course fair enough but they fair do enough. have some standout so i like them and um i've recently been into josh rosebrook i don't know whether you I haven't heard that of before them. okay so i think they are like uk based i'm not too sure where they're uh -huh. from but okay they use kind of a lot of botanical in their products interesting and i like them because all their products remind me of food <laughs> oh well that's easy I, i'm a foodie too so like <laughs> <Yeah>. i'm sold <laughs> yeah and i'm i'm actually really into k beauty and asian beauty okay. space so cool. i have a lot of favorite from that area nice. so i'll just shout out a couple of them okay so 107 make cram uh-huh osorex thank you pharma manio i don't know even if you've heard of any of these brands i've heard of, some of i've heard favorites. of i've heard of three of those brands i've heard oh, of three yay. of them so yeah i've heard of them okay and i haven't tried anything from those brands but now that i they have your blessing <laughs> your influencing is influencing I'm going to look them up Yay. and I'm going to pick up some, I'm going to pick up some products. This is what we want. This is what we want. We want to hear from honest, genuine people because as consumers, you know, listening to an ad from a company, of course, it's going to be glowing and positive, mm. but influencers were originally supposed to serve as 
a consumer protection group, as you may call it, you know, they were supposed to cross reference and cross check what the companies are saying versus the results that the products are actually giving. And I think that it's just unfortunate that influencers are becoming more like actors and actresses than actual reviewers, like honest reviewers. So I just want to thank you again for being on my channel and sharing your story. Um, I'm wishing you all the success in the world. And I'm looking forward to getting to know you better. Thank you so much for having me. It's been really fun. I've not done something like this before. <laughs> so yeah. Um, tell everybody where they can find you on online. So I'm on Instagram as Hort of Beauty. I do have a TikTok, but I confess that I am not on there very often. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm too old for TikTok. So. <laughs> same, same. I'm over it. It's okay. Uh, well, thank you again for stopping by. And um, everyone, be sure to go into the description box um, down below um, and go and find Hoarder Beauty on Instagram and TikTok. She is a fantastic creator. Please, please, please do that. And don't um, forget that if you don't like this video, you're going to get acne for the next 30 years. Okay. <laughs> Have a good one, guys. Bye.